the Word of God. One God, three persons. Seventh day Sabbath. The sanctuary. Marriage and the family. Second coming of Jesus Christ. Death and resurrection. The millennium and the end. The new earth. Sharing of changing lives. Hope Channel Philippines. Hello, Masbate! Once again, a beautiful evening to all our friends, brothers and sisters, and our families in this island of Masbate. Throughout the Philippines and the whole world, I know we have many friends watching our first night in other countries. Uh, you are all welcome. And I hope you will uh, bear with us until the end of this uh, program. And I hope you have gained a lot of things in our first night. Um, and I am sure that you will be inspired watching the succeeding nights for we will bring in more good news and health tips until October 2, until this program will end. So our program for tonight goes by the following participants. The opening song, again, our theme song, that is, I Will Go. And the opening prayer will be offered to us by Sister DJ Lipaw Pau. And that will be followed by a health lecture about nutrition. So, abangan nyo po ina. Will be shared to us by Sister DJ Lipaw Pau. And the, the musical rendition will follow. Um, that will be offered by the Esters. The seminar proper um, will be the next. The topic that we will be discussing for tonight is the second coming. And that will be presented to us by Sister Geraldine Patalinghog. And the closing song will follow is still our theme song, I Will Go, and the program will be closed by the closing prayer by our speaker. So enjoy watching. God bless you all, friends.
Let's bow our heads for the prayer. Our kind and loving Heavenly Father, we are asking for your Holy Spirit to please be with us this afternoon. Please forgive all of our sins. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hello, everyone. And now we are going to talk about nutrition. So imagine... Igwa ka sin sports car na puro pangarap mo gayod. Mahal, mahal ini na sports car. Maski gamay na detalye, dapat alagaan gayod san maayo. Sa labas, puro perfect ang pakalinyada san mga pintuan. Biyo nagakuro kintab pa gayod. Pagbukas mo san car door, maaamoy mo ang soft, subtle leather. Sa imo pag-incode kag pag-turn mo sa engine on para i-start na ini siya nababati mo ang matahom na tunog sa makina The moment has come for you to take this your car for a drive Makalipas san pera na oras san imo pag-enjoy enjoy napansin mo na wara na sin gas kaya Naghanap ka sin gas station. Pagkita mo sa manual, sabi dito, premium lang na gas ang imo ikakarga sa sarakyan. Pero napaisip mo, siguro puro parehas man lang ang mga gas. So, ang imo ginhi mo, regular lang na gas ang imo gin karga. Later, pagkita mo sa engine oil, may nakahalo gali na tubig. So kung iruksad to ang pag-alaga mo sa imo car, sa tingin mo, madugay ina siya? Ang aton lawas, mas matahom, kag mas complex kesa sa pinakamahal na sports car. Pero, para sa sports car, para kailangan man sa aton lawas sin fuel para mapaandar ang aton buhay. Kagina na fuel, nagahali sa mga pagkaon na aton ginakaon. A balanced diet na hali sa best foods, amuan magahatag sa aton sa mga essential nutrients na kaipuhan sa aton pagtubo, maintenance, kag energy. Pagin pili mo ang mga low quality foods or dili ka nagakaon sa tama na best foods, our body machinery will suffer. Pag sobra man na pagkaon, ini magaresulta sa obesity. Kag pag sobra man na nutrients, pwede kita mahilo. Why wait for a special occasion to celebrate? Shouldn't we celebrate every meal with healthful food choices? In each meal, one can enjoy the nutrient-dense foods, whole grain breads, and cereals, along with rich, colorful fruits and vegetables containing abundant amounts of vitamins, minerals, dietary fibers, and phytochemicals. Enjoy essential fats in crunchy nuts and seeds, bone-building calcium from low-fat milk or a fortified soy milk, and healthful proteins from satisfying beans, seasoned delicately with herbs and small amounts of salt, sugar, and vegetable oil as needed. These energizing bodybuilding foods consumed daily in appropriate quantities can reduce the risk of cancer, coronary heart disease, hypertension, intestinal disease, obesity, and osteoporosis. We can truly celebrate at every meal because of the abundance of good food God has given us. Damo ang nag-aisip na dili madali magpili or dili madali ang pagpili sa good nutrition, lalo na 
ang intindihon ini. Pero, simple lang ini siya. Kaya tunaan ka po sa understanding na part. Anaton lawas na kukuha ang mga nutrients na kaipuhan halis sa pagkaon na aton ginakaon. As the food is digested and assimilated in a fantastic process that begins in the mouth, moves to the stomach, then to the small intestines, and finally to the large bowel. The nutrients our bodies need include carbohydrates. The largest portion of our diet should come from this in as unrefined a form as possible. Whole grains, legumes, fruits and vegetables are rich in carbohydrates. There are approximately 4 calories per gram in carbohydrates. Next are the proteins. Every cell in the body contains proteins. Tissue repair and growth require them. While almost foods contain some protein, particularly good sources are milk, eggs, and other animal products. Legumes are excellent plant sources. F next are the fats. These are concentrated source of energy. We often get too much fat in our diet because we like the flavor it imparts to foods. Example, boiled or baked potatoes versus French fries. So, mas gusto natin ang French fries kasi mas may flavor na siya. Next is the vitamins. Vitamins together with minerals and trace minerals. These are essential for growth and health. And of course, we also have antioxidants and phytochemicals. These substances protect the body from disease and some of the effects of aging. So ini po anaka pabata sa aton antioxidants. They are found primarily in whole grains fruits, vegetables, and nuts. So, kung gusto ta po magbata kita kitaon, amo lang po inan aton pagkakaon ng fruits, vegetables, nuts. There are five essential food groups. When we eat foods wisely chosen in appropriate amounts from all five groups, we will meet our optimal nutrient needs. So, here are the five groups. First group, cereals and grains. This should be the foundation of our diet. They include whole grain breads, pastas, rice, and corn. They are rich in dietary fiber and complex carbohydrates, as well as an array of vitamins and minerals when taken from unrefined. Pag dili po siya processed, dili puti na rice. Amo po kita makakuha sin damo na nutrients. Next is the fruits and vegetables group. These foods come in a wide variety of colors, flavors, and textures and are the richest sources of protective phytochemicals, antioxidants, and many vitamins and minerals. Damo sa aton ang gusto maging bata kitaon, so amo po ini ang aton pagkaonon. Damo po kita makukuha didi na antioxidants sa fruits and vegetables. Next group, legumes, nuts, and seeds. So example po sa mga legumes are beans, green peas, and lentils. And there are good sources of good protein along with minerals, vitamins, and other protective elements. Next group, dairy and eggs. 
These animal sources of food provide many important nutrients including calcium and vitamin B12. Kung bili po eksakto ang amount sa vitamin B12 na aton ginakaon or ginasulod sa aton lawas, ini po nakukuha man sa mga supplements, sa mga capsule, sa mga bulong na po siya. And pagkulang po ang ayat ang aton vitamin B12, magkakaigwa po sin permanent damage ang aton lawas. Another group, fats, oils, sweets, and salt. So, ini naman po ng mga pagkaon na ini dapat is small amount lang po. The essential fats and sodium are necessary for optimum health. Kaya gamay lang po ang aton. Um, kailangan sa ni ikaunon kay nagiging toxic po ini sa lawas naton. Iodine is a necessary trace mineral and easily supplied if iodized salt is used. Kaya pwede ba po na iodized salt na lang natin paggamiton para mo po makahatag sa aton sin iodine. It also can be obtained from sea salt, seaweed, or a supplement refined sugar. Um, a refined sugar is not required for good health, but Small amounts add plateability and flavor to our foods. Gamay lang po para naman po may flavor man ang aton mga pagkaon. One of the most important keys to eating a balanced plant diet is selecting a variety of foods whose color, texture, and flavor add interest to the diet. Iba-iba po na foods ang aton pagpipilion. These foods are best when consumed as they come from nature, not refined. Fresh, fresh pa hali sa puno, hali pa sa mga tanom, dili pa po na pa-process. Not pulled apart, not fractionated. Whole foods should be the goal. Um, according po sa dietary guidelines for Americans, use plant foods as the foundation of your meals. Eating a variety of grains, fruits, and vegetables is the basis of healthful eating. Ginpa simple po ina siya na, um, in, in, na instruction sa aton. Ang simple here version is to make half your plate fruits and vegetables. So, ang katunga po sa nimo plato, dapat fruits and vegetables. Today, the world is recognizing the advantages of vegetarian diet. Low in fat, no cholesterol, and high in dietary fiber. A healthful diet needs to be based on sound principles that guide the food choices we make. So, amo po ini ang magiging guide naton sa pagkaon na aton mga pipilion. What are these five guidelines? First is the variety. Paiba-iba. So, perhaps the most important principle of eating right is select a variety of foods from the five groups discussed earlier. So, dili man po pwede na puro lang itlog, dili po pwede na puro man lang prutas, dili man po pwede na puro lang gulay, dapat po paiba-iba. So, sad na grupo, igwa, igwa kan fruits, igwa kan vegetables, igwa kan naman itlog, igwa kan naman sin source of protein. So, amo po yun na siya, paiba-iba po. And this ensures a wide range of nutrients to support a healthy body. Kung iba-iba na pagkaon, iba-iba man po na nutrients ang masulod sa aton. Next is the quality. Choose the majority of your food from whole foods, not refined foods. These foods are nutrient-dense, Rather than calorie dense, so piliin tapo ang quality sa pagkaon na aton ginakaon. We have the variety and then the quality, and then the third is the balance. 
balance mga kaibang hudan balance sa aton pagkaon because obesity is a growing problem worldwide obesity is sobra po na katabaan sobra po na pagkadako san lawas because dili po balance and indagi na kaon pwede po na puro lang karne kaya nasusubrahan po manan inda kadako there needs to be a balance between the amount of energy we eat and the energy we expend dapat po balance man ang foods and an exercise or physical activity na aton gina himo kasi dili man po pwede sin puro lang kaon puro lang kaon dili ta siya ilalabas through physical activity that is another reason na nagtataraba po ang mga tao next is the moderation Tama lang po. Some important components of a healthful diet need to be eaten only in small amounts. These are the fats and salt and sweets. Small amounts lang po. We require adequate amounts of the essential fats. Fats are also the vehicle for fat-soluble vitamins. We also need small amounts of salt to maintain our electrolytes. Kailangan taman po sin fats para ma for our electrolytes, but not too much po. Next is the avoidance. May mga pagkaon na kailangan po gayod i-avoid, iwasan. Highly refined foods that often have large amounts of their nutritional elements removed. So kung halimbawa ang nutrition sa nina o sa napagkaon, hinali na, ayaw na po sa napagkakaon. Example, alcohol, coffee, and sodas, mga soft drinks. So wala na po yun na siya si nutrients na nahatag sa aton, kaya we should avoid them. A helpful diet can increase lifespan and the quality of life. God loves us and desires that we lead healthy, productive, and happy lives. We can celebrate His goodness as we appropriately enjoy the many products of the earth that He has given us. Just as we require physical food each day, we also need to feed the inner person on spiritual food. We should not neglect to make a daily practice of feeding on God's Word. We have emphasized the need for variety, balance, and flavor in the foods we consume. But we require balance in our spiritual food as well. We can feast on God's Word by contemplating His wonderful promises, reading inspirational stories, and spending time daily in prayer. These practices will help us to grow spiritually as well as physically. Balance and control in life come from the steady application of the lessons learned in the reading of His Word. Let us do these things, brethren, with praise in our hearts for the energy and health that God provides. This is my prayer. Once again, good evening.
because His gospel was restored. friends, brothers, and sisters in Christ. Welcome to the second night of our Women's Ministries Bible and Health Seminar. Tonight, our study will focus on Matthew chapter 24, the signs of the second coming of Jesus Christ. Matthew chapter 24 is one of the greatest passage about the second coming of Christ. And who is more reliable to talk about his second coming than Jesus himself? So this evening, we will discover together the prophecy found in Matthew chapter 24. Sanjutay pa po ako, I love this place very much. It's at Pinisiano Park in Leyte, located in Palo Leyte, not because ordinary lang siya na park, but because there is something very special in the story about this MacArthur Park. After struggling against the great odds to save the Philippines from Japanese conquest, U.S. General Douglas MacArthur received an order from the U.S. President Roosevelt. So, wala siyang iba na choice. He left his 90,000 soldiers both American and Filipinos para po maguli dito sa United States. And pagkato niya, when he reached Australia, he made this famous line, I came through and I shall return. The same man promised to return. In John 14.3, it says, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. I am inv inviting everyone to pause for a moment of prayer. Our mighty God, loving Heavenly Father, as we start our study this evening, please help us. Please help us to understand the signs and the manners of your second coming. We thank you for the assurance that all of us will receive the power of the Holy Spirit this evening, that we will understand that you are coming so soon to take us. Thank you for loving us, the Lord. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Panupo natun maaraman that Jesus will surely come. Last night po, we talked about the Bible. And we have learned that the Bible po is the Word of God. 
And God is true to His promises. So the certainty of second advent is rooted in the trustworthiness of the scriptures because God said it and I know that it will be fulfilled. So, pariha po kan Douglas MacArthur and much more than Douglas MacArthur, san dito na po siya sa Australia, sa nagsabi siya, I shall return, igwa po siya sin mga problema. Ginhimo niya na mantra sa iya buhay, ito na iya ginsabi na I shall return. So for two and a half years, before po siya nakabalik didi sa Philippines. The same way his disciples asked Jesus a question. Sabi sa Matthew chapter 24, 3, What shall be the signs of your coming and at, of the end of the world? So nano po Jesus ang signs at imo pagbalik because they were so excited because they knew that the only solution to the problem that they have is the coming of Jesus. So nano man po ang signs at iya pagbalik. So maaraman talang po ina if we are going to study the Bible. It is very important that we should study the Bible because it is the Word of God. It is crucial that we know the signs of His coming so we can be ready. Moreover, the scriptures were inspired by God Himself. It is found in 2 Timothy 2.15. The key here is to be prepared. Paano kita maghanda? To meet and to go home with Jesus at all times. It is all about having a relationship with Jesus. Tonight, let us all discover the prophecy of Jesus' second coming. It is found in the book of Matthew chapter 24. So we will be dealing this one by one. Let us proceed to the first sign that Jesus will surely come. The first, there will be many false Christ. One of this is David Koresh. So sa Amerika po, igwa sinusad na tao and named David Koresh. And David Koresh claimed to be the Messiah, he claimed to be Christ himself. Kag dili na po naton paharayuon. In the Philippines, maigwa po din mga tao na nagasabi na sinda si Jesus. So, isad po ini siya na sign that Jesus is coming very, very soon. Let us proceed the number two, wars and rumors of wars. In verse 6, and ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nations shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. In our history, we have experienced more and more wars. In 1914 to 1918, there was the World War I. And after, it was followed by a World War II in 1939 to 1945 and the Vietnam War in 1954 to 1975. And the most famous today, the Afghanistan War. So, inigali na mga gira na nagapatalibod sa aton is a sure sign that Jesus is coming soon. The third sign that we are going to discuss this evening is still found in chapter 7. There shall be famines. Many have starved to death today in Ethiopia and in Africa and even in our own country. We are not just talking about occasional death, but many thousands and perhaps millions dying because of lack of food. Jesus looked down through the ages and saw this famine. And today, Maskin diin kita magkanto, igwa po sin damo na mga tao, damo na mga bata, damo na mga pamilya ang nagugutom. We are st still on the chapter 7 of this chapter, and there shall be pestilences. Pestilences synonymous to epidemic, pandemic, plague, affliction, blight, conquer, and many, many other more, or cursed. So one of the famous that cost 40 million, a 200 million people died in just four years is the bubonic plague or the black death plague. 
And paano kita malilimot today? We are in a pandemic. We have the coronavirus that up to, up to now, it's still claiming thousands and thousands of lives. Damo-damo gihapon ng mga tao ang nag perish because of this plague. And interestingly, another another crisis or another sign in chapter 7 is earthquakes. Earthquakes in diverse places. There has been many, many earthquakes all over the globe. Maskin sa aton, patalibod, dili lang po kay sa iba na nasyon, igwa po talaga sin great earthquakes that claims lives also. And recently, we have an earthquake and many damages here in our place, specifically in Katayngan. So sa Katayngan, may igwa po sa mga balay na nasira, may igwa po sa mga buhay na nawara because of earthquake. So, kun igwa po sa earthquake, kun igwa po sin sin pestilences, kun igwa po sin war, of course, igwa po sin famine. So that is why they are all incorporated in chapter 7. So igwan tulo, kasi po, Apiktado po ang pagkaon natin kung igwasan ni natulo. So, the next sign is, those who follow Jesus will be persecuted. This is found in verse 9. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you, and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. So, san una po na mga panahon, nagkaigwaman po sin great persecution. Igwa po sin millions of Christian and even our martyrs died because of persecution. Let us move to the next sign of Jesus coming. False prophets in verse 11. One of the greatest prophets of all times is John the Baptist. John the Baptist prepares the way of Jesus. Siya po ang nagprepare san, san dalan para kan Jesus and he even baptized Jesus Christ but today many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many today po there is a proliferation of false prophets igwa po sin baga po sin uh, kun plantitas kita baga po sin pagpananong damo damo po na tatapnan so damo damo po nagatubo na mga false prophets across the world manifested as tarot card readers at iba po mga psychics fortune tellers the people that claim to know what will happen in the future principally what will happen in people's lives kung sino ang maasawa ni ano kung sino ano ang magiging kapalaran ni ano but of course in exchange for a money di ba in the po ginapangabuhayan para sabihon kung ano ang mangyayari sa imo buhay. So Christ warned us na maging aware kita sa mga false prophets. Number eight is the love of many shall wax cold. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Usad po ini siya na makasusubo na story mga kaigmanghudan. Usad ka makasusubo na warning because our church, our family is not exempted. Di ba po, today we experience the coldness of the church. Many have left the church. Nagbiriya na sinda sa simbahan throughout the ages because of apostasy. Because they experience the coldness, the lack of love inside the church. It is rampant all over the earth. And throughout history, men's hearts are just full of wickedness. Men want to do as they please. Nanong gusto ninda in the himuon? Men are lovers of pleasure. Men are grossly selfish. They wanted to satisfy their own selves, their needs, their desires, at the expense of others. So this is a very sad reality that we are experiencing today. And the, the next one is the gospel of the kingdom. In verse 14 of the same chapter, 
And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness to all nations. And then shall the end come in Revelation 14, 6 to 12. This is where we found or we find the three angels' message. Nga kita ina. The text never said a gospel. But the text said this gospel of the kingdom. So kita po, we have a trumpet to sound. Igwa po kita sin warning. We are given the task to proclaim God's message to the world. Kailangan ta po na i-warn ang mga tao na nakapatalibod sa aton because we want them to be saved. Gusto natin na pariya sa aton, gusto taman sinda makaupod. And we are given the task to proclaim the good news of salvation. The third angel message should be Preach to all the world so that many people will come out of Babylon. The next is Jerusalem will be destroyed. So this is found in verse 15 and 20. Jesus predicted that the temple in Jerusalem will, would be destroyed and it was. Sabi ni Jesus, and his disciples came unto him for to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be cast down. And indeed, because Jesus said that Jerusalem was destroyed in AD 70. Kagwara talaga san may nabilin, maskin usad na bato. So, magduduha-duha pa ba kita na Jesus would come? The next is the Great Tribulation. Nano ang ibig sabihon sa tribulation? Mga kalisod, affliction, distress, adversity, trouble, suffering, grief, great difficulty, ordeal. Sabi sa Matthew chapter 24 verses 21 and 22, For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world, to this time, no, nor ever shall be. And except those days should be shortened, there should be no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Another sign that Jesus is coming is the false Christ and false prophets, or the impersonation of Christ. This is found in verse 23 and 28. So kung may igwa po kita gusto na emphasize na very important thing, we usually repeat it. So amo po din nangyari kan Jesus San Matthew chapter 24. He repeat this sign because sabi niya then if any man shall say unto you, lo here is Christ or there believe it or believe it not for there shall arise false Christ and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders in so much that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. So sa tanan po ng mga signs na maabot si Jesus, amo po ini siya ang gintagaan ni Jesus, sindako-dako na emphasis. Sabi niya, even the very elect. So maskin ang pinakamatanos na mga tao, pwede sinda madeceive because Satan will try to impersonate Christ and he will do wonders. In verse 25 to 27, Behold, I have told you before, wherefore, if they say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers, believe it not. For as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. So ang pagbalik po ni Jesus, dili po siya sikrito. Dili po siya kay adto lang sa Mindanao or pagsabi na si Jesus adto sa Manila, dili po daw kita magtuod because parehas ang lightning ang pagbalik ni Jesus. The next sign of His coming is dark day stars fell. Amazingly, this one event was recorded in the history and it happens in 1833, particularly on November 13, 1833. Nagkaigwa po sin greatest meteoric shower. Damo-damo po na stars ang nahulog from heaven. So, grabe po ang pagkahulog. So, ang mga tao, nalisang po sinda. 
And in New England, dark, nagkaigwa po sin dark day. Sana po na day in May 1970-80, bagay siyang usual day para sa tanan ng mga tao. The sun shines early in the morning, but then pag abot po sa noon time, nag-start po na mag-darken ang sky. And nag-abot po ni siya as far as north to the Portland and as far as south in the New Jersey. So, udto ito, uro udto, but there was complete darkness that the even lighted candles and lanterns para makakita po sinda. Guru gabi po talaga sa inda. And workers were forced to leave, ho leave para sa inda balay po. Naguruli sinda. Children were forced to go home. Nauruod to. So ang mga papa po, they prayed. Women wept. And they were all paralyzed. They were all puzzled. They were all they were all afraid kung ano na nangyayari kay uruod to pero wara na sinsan kag duro dark na po sa inda and until now wara po sin specific explanation and science why it happened but it is recorded in Matthew chapter 24 and of course the highlight of Jesus signs of his coming is Jesus will finally come in verse 30 of the same chapter and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all tribes of the earth mourn. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. As the days of Noah were, pariha po sa panahon ni Noah, baga lang po sa mga tao, an ordinary na day. But as in the days of Noah, people were eating they were drinking, they were marrying, and they were giving in marriage until the ark was shut, and then they perished. So mga kaigsuunan, those are the signs of Jesus coming. Ang pangutana, di ba? Amo niya ang signs ng pagbalik ni Jesus. And one of the signs that He has given unto us is to take heed that no one will deceive us, that people will be prophesying mga false prophets and false Christ. So, nanuman man po talaga ang manners and pagbalik ni Jesus? Paano taman po masiguro na ang nag-abot si Jesus po talaga? So, to enable believers to distinguish between the genuine event and the false coming, several Bible passages reveal details of the manner in which Christ returned. And we have here five things to study. How will Jesus come? Panuman talaga si Jesus mabalik. The first, the first one, the first truth about the manner of Christ coming is Jesus coming is a literal and personal return. So, ang pagbalik daw ni Jesus is a literal and personal return. When Jesus ascended in the clouds and makato na po siya sa heaven during His ascension, His disciples were still gazing. Maskin wala na si Jesus, naghangad po sinda mga kaigmanghudan. Naghangad po sinda sa langit. Because they are looking for their departed Lord. But two angels were there and sabi sa duhan ni angels, Men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing up into heaven? Nano kinaga para kinita pakamudida sa langit na wara naman nida si Jesus. The same Lord who had just left them will come personal, flesh and blood being, not some spirit entity in Luke 24, 36 to 43. Jesus would return to earth and his second advent would be as lateral and personal as his departure. So kupan o si Jesus naghali po, amo man po ang iya pagabalik. He will not touch his feet to the ground. The second one is Christ will come in his a visible return. The coming of Jesus is a visible return. Jesus warned his disciples against being taken in by secret. His second coming by comparing his return to the brilliance of lightning. So mga kaigsoonan, maskin po, 
dulom-dulom ang patalibod, nismaskin po igwa sin bagyo, pero pag may igwa po sin kidlat, we would surely recognize it as lightning. Makikita ta po talaga na, uy, nagkidlat, maskin dulom-dulom po. So, amo man po ini ang pagbalik ni Jesus. Sabi niya, Scripture clearly states that the righteous and the wicked will simultaneously witness His coming. John wrote, Behold, He is coming with clouds, and every eye will see Him. In Revelation 1.7, And Christ noted the response of the wicked. All the tribes of the earth will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. So again, Christ's second coming is a visible coming. Every eye will see Jesus coming. The third one, the third manner of Christ coming is, it is an audible re return. The Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God. So pagbalik ni Jesus po, tanan po kita, it is visible and it is audible. Mababati ta po, because there will be silence in heaven, because the angels will be coming with Jesus. So damo-damo po na angels, kag damo-damo po ang mablows and trumpet. So it will be a very noisy day or a very noisy hour when Jesus will come. So it is an audible return that even the dead will hear the sound of that trumpet that Jesus is here already. The next manner that Jesus will come is Jesus coming is a glorious return. When Christ returns, He comes as a conqueror with power and in the glory of His Father with His angels. So, Si John po beautifully portrays the coming of Jesus. Nagsabi siya that Christ will come riding on a white horse leading the innumerable armies of heaven. The supernatural splendor of the glorified Christ is apparent. So it will be very bright, very glorious. Kung naano kaganda ang ato nakikita ng mga glorious na mga bagay, it will be much, much more than that because Christ is coming in glory. The last thing is Christ coming is a sudden and unexpected return. So, Christians who are waiting for the second coming of Jesus and who is longing and looking for Christ's return will be aware when it draws near. Ang mga tao daw na nagahulat sa pagbalik ni Jesus, aram ninda na mabalik na si Jesus, na malapit na siya magabalik. And they prepare themselves. But for the inhabitants of the world in general, Paul wrote, The day of the Lord so comes as a thief in the night, for when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them as labor pains upon a pregnant woman, and they shall not escape. So just like the time of Noah, in the last days when Christ will come, there will be two classes of people. Iguasin duha na classes ang mga tao. Inin ang mga tao, Sa time ni Noah, the, the, one, the first one believed in Noah's word and went into the ark and was saved. But the other group of people chose to stay outside of the ark. Then the flood came and took them all away. The same manner in the last days. People who would choose not to hear the message of God calling to come out of Babylon, they will choose to perish with all the sinners and knew not until the flood came and took them away so shall also the coming of the son of man be watch therefore for ye know what the hour your lord doth come therefore be also ready for in such an hour as ye think not the son of man cometh so what i love in the story of douglas macarthur so after san iya pag abot pag abot niya sa america Nag, nagbiyahi Australia, nagbiyahi siya pakato sa Melbourne and he was surprised na iya nakita na igwa lang po sinjutay ng mga tao and dili pa sinda mabalik sa Pilipinas. Ginconquer muna niya ang iba na mga, mga kalaban dito and after two and a half years, finally he came. And when he landed finally in Leyte, pag touch niya sa Leyte, he made this announcement, a very, very 
happy announcement. He said, People of the Philippines, I have finally returned. So, nano kaya kalipay sa mga soldiers na iyagin bayaan na wara san pagkaon, wara san tubig, wara sin, wara sin mga badil, wara sin, most especially wara sin leader. And here comes the great announcement that he is finally here in the Philippines. And after that, he conquered Luzon. And when he finally met his soldiers, some 90,000 soldiers, only one-third was left alive. So, igwa lang po siyang 30,000 na mga soldiers na buhay kag nakitaan iya pagbalik. And sabi ni Douglas MacArthur, sabi niya, I am sorry, I am a little bit late, but finally, I came. Para po sa aton, for some of us, we are just like the soldiers. Some of us are wounded. Grabe na aton mga samad, emotionally, physically, mentally, and sub, um, some of us are tired. Some of us are abandoned. We do not have food, and some of us are persecuted. That we may say, Jesus is late. But my dear brothers and sisters, Christ is always on time. Kung nagtuod ang mga soldiers na mabalik si Douglas MacArthur and they were happy, amo man po dapat kita because Jesus doesn't want only the one-third of the population to be saved. Christ wanted us all to be in heaven. Gusto niya na tanan po kita, iya maabutan na faithful and iya daraon kita sa heaven. So, nano po kay amo po talaga niya siyang favorite ko na park because the story is a very, very deep. Grabe na makasabi ka nano ang mga Filipino na worth niya balikan. Na in fact, ang iya family nagkato na senda sa Amerika o sa Australia, nag-uli na senda dito para senda safety. Pero nagsabi siya and he came back. So Jesus Christ is much, much more than Douglas MacArthur. So ang sabi niya sa aton, it will be a day that will be a glorious day for us when the promise na nagpromise sa ato na mabalik will take us home will come again, again and give us the liberty from the oppression of this world I hope that we would choose to wait I hope that we would patiently wait and working in earnestly for the salvation of others sabi ni sa second coming ni Jesus, sabi niya, The Redeemer's return brings to a glorious climax the history of God's people. Behold, this is our God. We have waited for Him. We will be glad and rejoice in His salvation. I hope na mas kinano pa man na mga kasakit na natin na babatsyagan na natin na experience sa sanina mundo, we will always look to that blessed hope and the assurance that one day Christ will come and ang mga kasakit din sa ni nakinabaan matatapos na po so may we all patiently wait for Christ's return god bless everyone and happy happy evening to all Oh